Welcome you guys. This is Tessindra. I'm going to be trying a new game today called Nantucket. It's kind of like a RPG event-based uh, point-and-click turn-based system, turn-based combat system as well. So it's got a lot of things that I do enjoy when it comes to combat and RPG elements. And uh, But the thing is, I've only seen like other people play this game for like five minutes. So this is going to be a blind playthrough minus those five minutes that I saw. So I'm hopeful that I can, you know, enjoy this game and uh, present it in a positive view. I hope. Let's just start over here. So, character creation, Sea Dog. Uh, you can save only by quitting the game. A permadeath. Now we're not gonna start out with that. We're gonna. Not as uh, my first go of this. So we have four stats. Hunting. Hunters are men without fear, born to chase their prey. They can stand on a whaleboat's bow, sailing towards danger, or face the white... wickedest pirate without hesitation. Oh, so we're gonna have to fight pirates as well. Sailing. Sailors are valiant explorers who spend their lives at sea, be the vessel a majestic galleon, a whaleboat, or a simple board. They know how to keep it afloat. Scientists are invent investigators of the natural world. Their curiosity and competence can unlock the sea's mysteries and secrets, and above all, save lives on your ship. So he's like the doctor slash tech guy. All right. Craftsmen are expert artisans who specialize in all of the ship's practical errands. Their hands are surely the dirtiest and most useful at sea. Choose my trait. Smart. Plus one point to spend in attributes. Strong. Plus two damage in combat against sea creatures. So that does not count as pirates. 50% HP regained during the navigation. I don't know what that is. Healthy. Plus one health per level. That's kind of boring. Open-minded. One XP gained per day of navigation. Let's just go with smart. Then we have two extra points here. So I'm going to go for sailing, because that's this is the captain. This is going to be me as well. No, 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 no. There we go. And do you want to go two points into sailing? I don't know enough about this, the system. But I imagine the captain is going to be the, uh, the sailing guy. Um, there's no explanation of what these two things do. I'll just go two points in sailing and uh, see what happens. Let's uh, let's play. U.S. Civil War. Oh, wow, that was quick. Nantucket. Take out your map and look at it. See how it stands there, away of shore, lonelier than the Eddystone Lighthouse. Welcome to Nantucket. This tutorial will introduce you to the core features of the game. Follow the instructions in the panel below. In order to proceed or press exit tutorial to end this tutorial. Okay, let's do next. After speaking with Captain Bill Bildad and Peleg, those are not common names. God damn. You get a job on the whaling ship? Pequot under her captain, Ahab. Ah so this is Moby Dick. Yeah, I was wondering about this is about finding Moby Dick, and this is uh, Captain Ahab. I have never read the book, but uh, I know the characters kinda. Your friend Kikek is at a tavern, and you got him a chance of skipping out with you. And you got him a chance of skip of shipping out with you. He told you he was kill he has killed more whales than you can count. Meet him at the tavern. Okay, enter the tavern. Ah, so this is where we recruit, and we have prestige. Okay. The tavern is the place where all the mariners come for a drink and is the best place to find new crew members. Crew members are divided into five classes according to their key attributes. Sailors, sailing, hunters, hunting, craftsmen, crafting, scientists, science, and cabin boys. Classless characters you can hire and train to any other class. Oh, so they're like recruits. Find Ke... Que -que. I have no idea how to pronounce that name. Que -que. By selecting the Hunter's tab. So he is a Hunter. He's a level 5. Or 5 Prestige. 
Uh, minus 10% cannon chance to hit. Is it? By selecting a character, you can check his stats. I'm just gonna call him QQ. You can check his stats. You can. You do not have to pay to hire a crew member. Really? According to his class and level, each character will take part of your future incomes. The only limits are represented by the maximum crew capacity of your ship and your actual prestige. The price in prestige of each crew member is equal to his level. Uh, so I cannot hire dudes until my prestige is high enough. So I'm at prestige 16, so I can hire this guy who's at prestige 5. Okay. Hunting 5. Skills. Pain Master. Attacking a sea creature causes bleeding. Add bleeding to the target. Inter interesting. Fasten. The character's hunting die gains fasten. So there's there's dice casts in this. Against sea creatures. Damage uh, plus add bleeding plus add fasten to target. Ah. Fasten. So you can fasten to the creature. So he, this guy's got like... He's got things that kill sea creatures, but against pirates, I'm guessing he's going to be useless. And he is a swimmer. While retreating, he can't be targeted by enemy attacks in combat. Okay, interesting. Let's hire him. Uh, next, the shipwright. Yeah, okay. Build that. Ask you to reach the master shipwright office and order some improved harpoons. At the shipwrights, you can buy new ships, repair your current one, or access the shipwright workshop. Where you can improve your ship's compartments. Man, there's a lot of stuff here. This is our ship, the Peacock. It's a clipper size. No, it's a clipper type. It's a large ship size. Okay. But I'm guessing this is the tutorial and we're going to get our own ship later. Alright. Ships are divided into three categories. Small, medium, and big. According to the number of masts. Okay. Bigger ships can be equipped with more whale boats and carry more men because they have more compartments available. By using this inter interface, you can also upgrade your technologies, improving your ship and allowing you to access better ships. Upgrade the harpoons as requested by Bildad. Ah, okay, so... Hamlocks, hammocks. Sails. Shelving. Stoves. Surgical kit. Triworks? What is a Triwork? Lenses? That's gotta be navigation. Powder, okay. Research. 90 days for $200. Requirements. I have the money. There's no other technology being researched. Okay. I don't fully understand everything here, but okay. On your way back to the tavern, you meet Pelek. He is in a hurry to complete the preparations to weigh anchor and passes you a shopping list. List, pointing you towards the merchant's shop. You can find all the resources you will need to survive your seafaring adventures at the merchant's shop. Food, water, wood, and grog. See, you can buy all the supplies needed for travel. Water, food, grog, and grog are fundamental items needed to keep you and your crew alive and happy during your travels. Okay. While the food, while the wood is fundamental in repairing your ship and whale boats, always remember to leave some space in your ship's hold for whale oil and blubber. Whale oil and blubber. This is our resources that we were gonna find. Oh, I'm guessing we're gonna kill whales. Yeah, oh, makes sense. You're going on a hunt, not a cruise. So, 20 water barrels. Oh, so it says how long that will last. 91 days left of this. So, food. 102 days. Oh, it's nice that it estimates for us. So, the water is dirt cheap. But the food is like 10 times more expensive. Grog, we need three. That is very expensive as well. And then wood. Um, yeah, I can see it here. $2 each, $40 each, $50 each, 
and 20. Alright. Now you are ready to set sail on the Picard. Before reaching the ship, you stop by to buy a newspaper, knowing that it will take months before you will get fresh news again. The newspaper contains news from all around the world and information you can use during your travels. Okay. Uh, apart from world news and pirate activity reports, the newspaper contains a jobs page where you can find errands to complete in order to increase your prestige and fill your pockets. Check the jobs page. Maybe you can find something useful to report to Captain Ahab. Uh, British forces defeat Bayo Rajo II and take control of the Marathab Empire. That's like in South a America, I think. Or? Bayo Rajo. That does not sound like uh, an Indian. It sounds like more something in South America. British Admiral John Ross sets sail in search of the Northwest Passage. That's gonna be cold. Explorer Giovanni Bolzoni explores interior of the Great Pyramid of Giza. Okay. Job. Discover a new whaling area. Various exploration ships have reported the presence of large quantities of whales in Baffin Bay. It could become a new hunting area. Eight days away. We get $200 for this if we find it? Alright. You're finally ready to join the rest of the Peacock's crew and set sail. You did not meet Captain Ahab, but you're sure he's going to teach you a lot about life at the sea. And with QQ covering your back, you are sure nothing can go wrong. Set sail. Alright. Sail the seven seas all over the world. You can use shortcuts to open navigation panels or to start pause the game. Ah, uh, okay. Look at this map. It looks very old and inaccurate, man. Oh man, look at Iceland. It's kind of crooked. England is exactly how it looks. <laughs> Wait, it's in black and white? The map is in black and white. While you are working to release the sails, the Peacock's first mate, Starbuck, really, approaches you, ordering you to tell Flas to come to the deck and wait at the steering wheel for Captain Ahab's command. Open the ship's management interface to interface with the crew. The ship management interface can be used to assign crew members to specific tasks and check the general st status of the ship and her men. Every compartment has a specific effect and takes advantage of a single working attribute. You can move the characters directly by using the ship's blueprint or taking them in from the list below. Wait, I gotta, I gotta... Please, stop that. That rubbing, that the, the rope noise is really annoying. Wait, okay, let me do, check this again here. Um, so I assign crew members to specific jobs. Every compartment has a specific effect and take advantage of a single working attribute. So depending on their attributes, the crew should have... The, the I should match the crew's attribute to the compartment. You can move the characters directly by using the ship's blueprint or taking them from the list below. Put flasks in the quarter deck slot. Sick bay. Flask. Okay. That's it. But this is the... This is me. I'm over here. Who is this? We have a bunch of, like, low-level dudes here as well. Hunter, hunter, sailor, 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 craftsman, craftsman, cabin boy. We got one of those. His name is Pip and QQ. All right. He is up here. Okay. I guess I'll learn more about this later on. Navigation requires both planning and on-the-fly responses to the sea is dangerous. The wind rows below you show how the wind is blowing at the moment and the direction to take in order to sail windward. The filter above allows you to check the global wind patterns, meaning the most common wind patterns of, of specific sea er areas. Whale areas, journal interface, prevailing winds. All right. 
You can now inform Captain Ahab about the sightings you have read about in Nantucket. Okay. Open the quest interface by clicking on the right filter. And then select the mission you are interested in. The interface allows you to easily find the destination to complete it. Discover a new whaling area. Various ships have reported the presence of large quantities of whales in Baffin Bay. It could be a new hunting area. Alright. That's up there. Next. Oh. Captain Ahab was eager to have a chance to test his crew and order them to set sail in the direction of the sightings. You can select a destination by clicking the right mouse button on a point on the map and then pressing play to confirm it. Okay. If you hold the shift key while setting the route, it will add points to the current one. You can explore the map by using the left mouse button. Uh, select the destination. And confirm. While navigating, check the areas surrounding your ship to avoid dangers, such as adverse weather conditions or pirate ships. And keep your resources under control to avoid troubles at sea. Food and water keep the crew alive. Grok makes men happy and wood repairs your ship. Wait, so I can lose those sh just ab overboard? Next. Ah. Okay. So we're also exploring the map here. Oh, what is this? While navigating, you will have to deal with events that are triggered by your choices and the current status of your men and ship. Your choices can have huge consequences affecting the crew and shaping your character growth. Okay. Captain Ahab walks out of his cabin, shouting orders to Sarbuck. His wooden leg echoes like a war drum on the deck. As he reaches you, he stops watching your work. Hey kid, you clearly have no idea how to scrub a deck. Do you know at least why you're here? Strong trait. Greedy. Open-minded. Diligent. I don't know what these things do. Strong seems like a combat trait. I want to make a lot of money. It means probably I get more money out of the jobs or just in general. Open-minded seems... I don't know. I have no idea. Uh, maybe something to do with scouting or... Uh, I don't have no idea. Diligent. I've become better at my current job, maybe. Is there no way to see what... Well, he is already smart. Right? So, let's go with open-minded. Uh, this is no cruise kid, cries Ahab, as he walks away from you. Open-minded. I can't click me. I guess it's because we're in a tutorial, I can't. Alright, so we're almost there. The lookout spots a creature blowing in the distance, and the whale boat sent by Captain Ahab confirms that this is the place you were looking for. Ahab sends Stubb to help and orders Starbuck to lower another whale boat. Starbuck tells you to pick a harpooner and join him. Ooh, this is combat. The deployment interface helps you fill your whaleboat with men for the hunt. So we send out a whaleboat. We don't actually use our main boat for this, okay? Every whaleboat works as a single unit, and each character gives to it his own skill and available commands. Represented by the sides of their combat dice. Check QQ's profile by clicking on it. Alright. can assign a character to a whaleboat by dropping eight minutes. There's no need to fill all your whaleboats, okay? More men mean more chances to win a fight. Put QQ in the whaleboat and press the start button to begin the fight and help stub. So I have like no HP at all here. I have 10 HP. And both of us are sailors and he's the only hunter here. Alright. Narwhal. Okay. He's already injured. He's got 10 HP. Stubb has been fighting fiercely against the creature, but his whaleboat is in big trouble now. All the men are overboard. Really? Oh, they're all drowning. 
status overboard can't issue commands uh, as you can see from the status bar the creature profile tells you his special ability always in play the creature profile I don't see that where's his special ability and his current health points as you can see it is heavily wounded action instant I don't see what his uh, his uh, special ability is a fight is composed of consecutive turns during which each participant plays a card, offensive or defensive, and each whale boat plays a single command among the ones available after the dice are rolled. In order to roll the dice, press the roll button. Okay. I did not see the rolls. The creature threatens Stubbs' whale boat. Starbuck decides to move in to help. Moving the whale boat into the creature's zone of attack. Use the evasive maneuver command to remove the creature's attack by selecting the command with the left mouse button and then the enemy's card. Huh. Okay, so we stopped him from attacking. He's going to attack us now. Stub is safe. He and the men with him climb back on the, to their railboat. Okay, so we saved them. The creature now moves in your direction. Starbuck decides to stand and finish it. All the characters can throw offensive dice apart from their class ones. Select the Starbucks hunting dice. And roll the dice. Okay. Select your dice and roll. Okay. QQ steps to the whale boat's bow and aims at the charging creature, waiting for Starbuck's command. Attacks deal direct damage to the enemies. Harpoon damage is related to the character's hunting attribute. The quality of the harpoon and some traits hit the creature, so he has 11 strike. That's gonna kill this thing. Aww, dead. Aww, he's dead. They all turned Finn up. The agitated waters roil with roiled red with blood, and they finally fall silent. You raise your arm, and your man's victory cries around you. The creature lays motionless, killed by QQ's iron. Hunting whales and hunting whales and completing quests is your primary source of experience points and valuable resources. Like blubber. At the end of each fight, you can access the loot interface. Okay, this is the loot interface. We have blubber and food. The post-combat interface is divided into two panels. The left panel shows the changes in your crew's experience and, and morale. So we have more morale by one, but QQ got six for the last blow. Oh, so the guy that kills him gets the gets the boosted morale. Okay, but everybody shares the same experience. Okay, that might be interesting. If I need to boost morale of somebody important, I could save the killing blow for him. Uh, the right panel shows your loot. Use the buttons to load the blubber and meat on the pico and go back to your ship. Uh -huh. Okay. Sailing across the ocean, you may discover whaling areas, spots in the ocean where specific types of whales go to feed or mate. Every area is active for three months out of the year, and during this time window, you will be able to use it as hunting grounds to collect precious blubber to sell. Yeah, okay, so we have a month over here, so if we find a whaling area, it's only going to be available three months out of the year. Okay, next. You can show hide the discovered whaling areas and migration routes using the whaling areas filter on the top left corner of the screen by highlighting an area or a migration route segment wait, by highlighting an area or a migration route segment you're able to check the time frame in which it is active time frame so it's from June the 21st to September the 21st okay effect high chance to counter a narwhal okay so that's like a narwhal hunting area. It's a whale feeding area, okay? Next. 
You have learned the game's basic mechanics by bringing your mouse cursor over the interface's elements. You can access tooltips that will help you during your adventures. Now, go back to the main deck. Captain Ahab wants to speak to everyone. Oh! Cutscreen! Cutscene! Drink ye harpooners! Drink and swear! Ye men that man the deathful whale boat's bow! Death to Moby Dick! God hunt us all if we do not hunt Moby Dick to his death! I like the animation. Oh no, is this where Ahab dies? Oh shit, that's Moby Dick! He's huge! Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm. I was cursed. Twice. By the Lord for my blasphemous promise to hunt Moby Dick, and by Ahab for surviving the Pequod and its sons swallowed by the sea. I was craving to conquer my spot in heaven by striking my iron in Moby Dick's heart. What? So I headed back to Nantucket, looking for a new ship and wealth-seeking sailors. Okay, so I get my own boat now. Yes? No? Okay, I think this is as good a time as any to stop and end this uh, first episode. So we got through the tutorial and it's interesting. I want more combat, to be honest. The combat really interested me there. But um, trying to like coordinate the whaling areas and getting research for the ship. Like I could see there was a research tab there for the, uh, for the wharf, the shipwright. Yeah. In the shipwright, you can buy new ships and research technologies. That seems very interesting. And then we have just more men and more stuff. But anyway, I will see you guys in the next episode. And let me know what you guys think. This is so far an interesting game, but I don't know how long I'll last in it if uh, the combat is really, really janky. It needs to be more complicated in my taste, but we'll have to see. But until then, see ya.